Good afternoon everyone, welcome to Project Eden. So the title of today's video is going to be called Money Lenders or The Money Lenders. It was pesky money lenders where this all started from. Try, try and bear with me a little bit on this one because I've got like five pages of information. Of, it is going to be relatively scripted. Okay, and I did get, I'll put a link for the video. I think it was called A Century of Enslavement was the video where I got all the information from off of a guy on YouTube. Now, I did do some background research as well, just using general internet, Google, Wikipedia, in order to make sure those stories have relevance. And I knew, I knew the general story to it, but I wasn't, I didn't know all the intricate little details. So, um, yeah, I think it was good to really get this down. So yeah, we'll just start off as it's gonna. It may take some time to get through it. So it's, it's the late late 1600s. 1694, I believe, and the Nine Year War is raging across Europe. King Louis XIV of France is fighting against most of Europe, and King William III of England, um, who is basically fighting over his title and territorial disputes, was devastated in a stunning naval defeat by the French. Straight away after the defeat, he commits to rebuilding the fleet, the navy. But he's got one major issue, and that's money. Okay, so the fighting has exhausted the treasury. The coffers are are empty. In um, okay, sorry, it couldn't have been 1694. It must have been prior to that. So in 1691, sorry, Scottish banker William Peterson offers a solution. He proposes to form a company to lend a million pounds to the government at 6% plus 5,000 pounds management fee with the right to of no issue, so to issue currency money, okay? Right, by 1694, the offer has been revised at 1.2 million pounds at 8%, 4,000 pound management fee and the right to issue currency and they go ahead with that plan and they create the Bank of England. Now the Bank of England is no more British than British gas, okay? From there you can establish already it is a privately it's a private enterprise. It's a, it's not part of the government, but they give it a title, the Bank of England, makes it all sound very official, but it's not. It's a private organisation, okay? Moving on. Um, I'm just going by my notes here, sorry, so it says, yeah, the American Civil War was to fight against British rule of the colonist money. The war is exhausting the country's finances and the Continental, which is the money at the time in America, is worthless. They've printed so much of it, it, has, it holds up any value anymore. Okay. Robert Morris, who is a wealthy merchant, well, runs like a merchant company at that time, Merchant Shipping, and who was previously two years prior to where we are in this in this uh, tale now, this story now, was um, he was being investigated for war profiting. So you know, nice man. And he has got to the point where he's the second most powerful man in the US next to George Washington. So he certainly holds a position. Anyway, so he advocates a private central bank modelled on the Bank of England, believe it or not, which the colonies were fighting against in the first place. So, you know, you can, hopefully you can see the contradiction now. Backed into a corner and trying to fight a war, Congress really didn't have any other option. It was either give up the campaign or sort of go with this guy's idea, with uh, Morris's idea. So what Congress did was they chartered the banker's proposal um, to print the nation's currency and they set up the National Bank of the United States of America and they agreed to lend $1.2 million 
as they did in England, lending £1.2 million. Pounds. Okay, so it's just like a mirror, a mirror idea. But this time around, it's on, on a continent that is, you know, America at that time was the New World. It was pretty much still untouched in the respects that the, the colonies, the 13 colonies or whatever had been set up. Or natives that were getting pushed out of their land but they still held sort of the central territories and the French were over on the sort of coming in from the west coast and the Spanish were down in the south mainly South America um, yeah so I proposed this bank in, charted it in 1.2 million dollars um, by the end of the war Morris has fallen out of favour and the bankers as well going from a central bank to a commercial bank which was chartered by the state of Pennsylvania. So they've fallen out of, out of power and lost their position even by then. My phone keeps sort of semi-freezing as well. Bankers don't give up and in seven, by 1789, before the ink is even dry on the Constitution, or was it? That should be 781, shouldn't it? No, I'd put it 789, it must be. Um, a group led by Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton is working on the next private bank of the newly formed United States of America. In a letter from Hamilton to James Duane in 1781, Hamilton wrote, A national debt, if it is not excessive, will be to us a national blessing. These people are fucking unbelievable. It will be a powerful cement of our union. It will also create a necessity for keeping up taxation to a, to a degree which, without being oppressive, will be a spur to industry. Okay, so everything the American people just fought against taxation, the Stamp Act, the Boston Tea Party, all of that, all and, and the war that proceeded after and the lives that were lost, and the country almost going to bankruptcy. And really, what I've done is just bought, you know, wanted to put this money system in place just to keep taxing the people. Um, yeah, so the opposition of the bankers, the bankers is fierce, and luckily Jefferson and Madison call out the oppressive bankers, and Jefferson goes on to say this. 